Okay, um, I got a request to talk about the management of uh, preeclampsia. Uh, so we are going to talk about preeclampsia um, um, right now. So preeclampsia is uh, by definition um, that high blood pressure that a patient has after 20 weeks and that high blood pressure is associated with end organ damage. So um, once a patient uh, comes to a labor ward um, and we make a diagnosis of uh, preeclampsia, which we already know how to do, high blood pressure after 20 weeks, and usually with proteinuria, that uh, helps us make a diagnosis of uh, preeclampsia. Um, the critical points when a patient comes with uh, preeclampsia is deciding, does this patient have um, severe preeclampsia or do they have um, a mild preeclampsia? That's the first step. So how, how do we get that done? So um, you need to start with the history, of course. So um, a patient who comes with high blood pressure uh, comes with uh, proteinuria and they have a uh, headache, a very bad headache. They have visual disturbances. They have epigastric pain. Um, we usually put these patients in a category for severe preeclampsia. And again, this is um, what we are doing. These are practice points. So you have a patient with high blood pressure. They have proteinuria. They have visual disturbances. They have epigastric pain that patient is classified as a severe preeclampsia. Uh, the second way is um, your examination findings. Um, a patient who has um, this high blood pressure, um, then you find epigastric tenderness, um, you find uh, they are pale, you find they are jaundiced, that falls into the category of um, uh, severe uh, preeclampsia as well. Uh, they might um, have now, when you investigate the patient, you find the liver function tests are high, uh, there are signs of hemolysis uh, from your uh, blood tests, um, they have a high creatinine, all those um, abnormalities uh, make us classify a patient as having uh, a severe preeclampsia. So that's the first thing. You classify a patient as severe preeclampsia or mild preeclampsia. If they have any of those parameters that have been outlined, then they are classified as severe preeclampsia. If they don't have any of those parameters, they are um, classified as mild preeclampsia. So once that classification is made, every patient who has severe preeclampsia gets delivered, regardless of the gestation age. There might be 20 weeks, there might be 30 weeks, there might be, there might be 32 weeks, 33 weeks. Um, that doesn't matter. Difficult uh, situation uh, for the healthcare workers, difficult situation. Uh, for the mother, difficult situation for the family. Um, but um, the guide is that once we make a diagnosis of um, severe preeclampsia, we have to deliver the patient within 24 hours, regardless of the gestation age. A consultant uh, might make uh, different decisions uh, depending on maybe... Um, obstetric history of the patient and so on but for all of us um, mere mortals once we make a diagnosis of severe preeclampsia we have to deliver uh, that patient so that's the first thing then the second parameter to be aware of uh, apart from the severity of the preeclampsia is um, the gestation age so Every patient who has any hypertensive disorder in pregnancy and they're above uh, 37 weeks, they have to be delivered. They have to be admitted and they have to be uh, delivered. 
So if you have mild preeclampsia, severe preeclampsia, chronic hypertension, gestational hypertension, um, severe preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension, whatever, eclampsia, if you are above the seven weeks of gestation age, um, that patient has to be delivered. Of course, we shouldn't forget that uh, before we talk about delivery, especially in cases of severe preeclampsia, we have to stabilize the mother and then deliver the patient. For other patients, we have to discuss with them uh, what appropriate time today or maybe tomorrow that they have to be delivered. But once a patient crosses the line of 37 weeks, there's no need to delay their delivery or to wait for them to go into spontaneous labor, to wait for them to reach 40 weeks, 41 weeks. Once somebody has a hypertensive disorder in pregnancy and they are term, which is 37 completed weeks, they need to be uh, delivered. So that's the other consideration um, when we are managing um, uh, preeclamptic patients. So are they term or are they preterm? If they are term, whatever the type of hypertensive disorder they have, they have to be delivered. If they are preterm, um, then the story is um, a bit different. So if if somebody is preterm and they are severe preeclampsia, we've already said they have to be delivered. We don't uh, look at the gestation age. But if they are not severe, then usually what happens in those patients is that we start following them up. Um, we start following them up. We do blood pressures um, three times a week. We do urinalysis every week. We do a full blood count, Q&Ds, LFTs every week until we get them to 37 weeks. At the seven weeks, we deliver them. Or until something changes. So if a patient has a mild uh, preeclampsia and they are preterm, we see them every week. They go to the clinic and get their blood pressures done every other day. They get their urinalysis done weekly. They get their full blood count done weekly. Their liver function test done weekly. So if any of these parameters, including headache, visual disturbances, epigastric pain, all those things that tell us that this condition is severe, if any of those things happen, then those patients get delivered. If nothing happens to indicate that this condition is severe, then usually we monitor these patients until we get to 37 weeks. That's when we deliver uh, these uh, patients. Um, even when we make a diagnosis of a severe, um, when we make a diagnosis of mild preeclampsia, uh, the mother also has to be given dexamethasone, um, and uh, that dexamethasone is given uh, for those women in our setup again, all those women above 28 weeks and above, above the feet of viability, usually are the ones that get um, dexamethasone uh, until um, once they get dexamethasone, then we continue monitoring them in a way that, uh, that uh, we have um, described uh, already. So that's, that's how we manage the uh, preterm uh, mouth preeclampsias because that's the only category we are going to monitor um, and see every week. And then if we have the severe uh, preeclampsias, um, there the decisions are kind of clearer, even if they can be very difficult in the preterm uh, period because the baby is not mature, the baby might not survive, and our NICUs don't really survive babies that are less than one kg. So there's always uh, that anxiety um, when this decision is made for, um, for delivery. So once the decision for delivery is made, um, we usually would induce the patient and aim for a vaginal delivery unless there's a um, contraindication for vaginal delivery, unless there's a contraindication for induction of labor, then these patients would end up with a cesarean section. Um, 
but we don't want to routinely do caesarean sections because somebody has a severe preeclampsia or somebody has a uh, preeclampsia. We just we want to have these patients deliver vaginally until um, until there's a reason to to for them to have a caesarean section. So the other things are done in a similar manner. So we have to put patients on magnesium sulfate, the ones who have um, uh, severe preeclampsia, and we've already um, discussed that. The usual loading dose, 14 grams, and maintenance dose, 5 grams, or not an buttox every 4 hours for 24 hours. And we've um, said usually once the patient delivered in our setup, the magnesium sulfate gets stopped at that point. Usually patients get six doses because most of our uh, preeclamptic patients are delivered within 24 hours. Then um, we have to do blood pressure control as well. Um, and the drugs that we have on the wards are methyl dopa, hydralazine, and um, nifedipine. Those are the three drugs that we readily have, that are readily available on the ward and we are using for uh for uh, for control of blood pressure and again we don't want our blood pressure to be reduced rapidly you want it to be reduced slowly in order not to compromise fetal maternal uh, placental perfusion so once the magnesium sulfate is completed uh, these patients are usually sent to uh, to the postnatal ward for further monitoring where they stay for another 24 hours and then they get um, discharged after that. So generally, this is the way we are managing um, pre-eclampsia patient, patients in our uh, setup. Thank you for listening and see you in the next one.